Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing. And um, we're continuing our tour of uh, Northern Ireland, and we're delighted to be joined by Jamie Hamilton. How's how's it going? Not too bad with yourself. We're, yeah, so. we're in for trouble here, mind, because we're not going to get a word in it edgeways. You're literally going to be the quickest witted man. Come on from me. I know. I'm a just cheap... never give a word. <laughs> That's it. This I, th- is I, exactly... thought, I thought you were inviting me on this podcast and you were going to just talk the whole time. Not, not a bloody hope. <laughs> this is exactly why we invited you on. So, no, you literally, not only are you quick on a bike, you're very quick witted. And this is, it's quite, I'm actually getting a bit of a sweat on because you have no idea what we're about to tackle here. No idea. <laughs> a little bit of sort of uh, a little curveball, a little bit different from what we usually talk about. But you just mentioned just before you came up in an electric van. What's the crack there? I, I thought know. it was taking the piss. It's, is it's that actually all... an electric van? Yeah. So, uh, Mercedes truck and van, I'm going to ask first plug in there and that good. Uh, Mercedes truck and van Malaska. I've, I've been there quite often and I said to them, here, what's the crack with that whole electric van thing? And they wanted the, the I says, any chance you'd do me a demo? So they gave me a, they said, oh yeah, we'll do panel van. I said, what rate of miles is that? It says 100 miles to full charge. He says, it's no good. Like, what? 100 miles is not going to do me. So then they put me on the, uh, they put me in the tour model, which is like nine seater, does 200 miles to full charge. But, Got the message earlier on today, and I'm like, I that'll be a good run for the van. We 50 mile up the road, that'll be a good run for the van. But I have to go to Belfast here, so I'm gonna just leave it on charge now, and then it means I have enough charge to go to Port Rush tonight. Come home from Belfast, got on the way up here, and I'm thinking we have to turn the heater off because this thing's going to run your battery by the time <laughs> we get home. For arrived here tonight, and I'm, the first question they asked was, "Is there an electric point about here I could plug into?" <laughs> so. I keep watching the app on my phone to see what percentage of batteries on the van to make sure we get home. Is that literally draining while sitting, the van? No, no, because we were driving up. But yeah. um, the, when you turn the heater on, the heat, like the, the miles, the miles project, the miles <laughs> up goes down by like 15 miles as soon as you turn the heater on. So I was like, I'm going to need to turn the heater off. <laughs> so we came up, we came there from Balamani. We stopped at Joey's Bar in Balamani and we turned the radio off and we turned the heater off. To make sure we got here. Well, not to make sure we got here, to make sure by the end of the night we get home, okay? <laughs> I tell you what, there's some cracking names over here, you know, like Ballamoney, Ballabogie, Balla this, Balla, there's some right. I'm Balla Claire. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads of like, you know, when you, especially when you hear like natives talking between Na- themselves. Natives, Chrissy, about... we're not in the Congo, son. You know what I mean? No, this like, is... <laughs> Northern Irish people speaking to I each other. I was in a crayon class at school. Can you please not say any big words? Or anything? <laughs> I, like, I mean, whenever I say I was in the crayon class, I mean, I ate the crayons. <laughs> I didn't draw when I ate them. <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, we're just just in the kitchen there, just having a bit crack, and uh, we're t- talking about well, we're our, yeah, our, no. our um, sort of careers at BSB. Compl- just, just as you stopped is when I started, so it's like a different sort of era. And I'm, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to sort of hearing the stories from uh, like just before. 2010 I think it was where you you finished but um let's uh, let's go just go back right at the start so you you living over here uh, are you from a racing family are you, did your parents get it you into the sport um well my my mom's cousin is Gary Cowan which I don't know where you've ever heard of Gary Cowan but Gary Cowan raced 250 Grand Prix in 80 uh, 88 89 and around then 250 Grand Prix if you ever watch it on, on uh, Facebook or on YouTube loads of people have watched it Kirkus and I think it was 89 or 90 and, and he raced Ron Haslam on the 500 and he was in the 250 and it, there's so many people who listen to this podcast will have watched that race but so he was my mum's cousin but I'd never really spent that much Gary was sorry pa- Gary was paralysed then in 1990 in Daytona Um, he was paralysed so I, I never knew like I was born in 91 so I never ever knew anything about that and um, I played football so I played for Bolton Wanderers in Leicester City Um, whenever I was a child and then uh and then I, I didn't actually play for Bolton, to be honest. I played for Leicester City. And then the, the scout said, rung, rung up one week, one Tuesday night, and said, here, any chance you would come this weekend and play a, a tournament for Bolton Wanderers? And I says, like, I'm going to win my first mini motor race this weekend. I'm not going. And that was the end of the football and start of them starting to race motorbikes. And uh, what, what age was this then? 
Like right, to so be scouted. Would have been, right, so I was playing like under under nines, under tens for Leicester City. And then uh, it would have been whenever then my mum bought me a motocross bike because my mum my mum's a bit of a tomboy, loves motorbikes and she just you, Okay, let's clear this up. You I'm are gonna... the best mother ever. Because that this story does never start off with my mum buying me a bike. That uh, is so well, cool. My my uh, my mum and dad split up whenever I was Whenever I was eight or nine, um, my dad actually, uh, I shouldn't say this out loud, but my dad went to jail whenever I was eight or nine and we lived in Antrim and my dad was a big fighter and uh, every, when I went every Saturday night fighting. Now, I don't think, my dad's not a bad man. I don't I don't talk to him now, but he's not a bad man, but he just got, he just brought him on a council estate down the wrong path, just fighting every weekend. Every weekend he went out and fought and he ended up, he beat up 11 Scottish policemen uh, one one Sunday and uh, he he ended up going to jail and we moved from Antrim to Ballyclare and my mum obviously wanted to try and give me a motivation, keep me out of all that, just keep me away from fighting. So then I was, um, she, she had me at football, like she just run the length and breadth of the country with football. Uh, she bought me a motocross bike and the guy that, we took her to the motocross track and the guy that taught me how to ride um, ended up, I, I nearly railroaded him. So um, he, he bought he bought a mini moto for his son and he was like, the son wasn't really that interested. And he says, here, you can take a go on that. And I got on the mini moto and won, won, won on it. And then like kept winning, kept winning on it. He kept, so he nearly had to keep letting me ride. He said, ah, well, he's probably trying to take the smartness out of it. We'll get you on to Viva Prilia and see how smart you are then. On the one two five Aprilia, one and that too. Ah oh, well, we'll go to England and see how fast you are then. And then went to Three Sisters was the first race we went to. Uh, me, Jamie Coates, and Nicky Coates went to the Three Sisters. Van Van broke down on the way. It's such a great story. Uh, Van broke down on the way to the Three Sisters. Uh, we went to Blackpool in the Pleasure Beach at Blackpool. Um, on the big big dippers. got towed in the Three Sisters race track. Um, Ernie Coates then rung. Uh, the AA and got us so after the race weekend was over the AA pulled in hooked the sprinter van up now there we had like sofas in the back of it with people like there was about 10 of us went in this van so some people had to fly home <laughs> the rest had to went to go in the crew cab AA van right the whole length of the M6 right up to Scotland um, and home again so um, but I railroaded Harry Harry Corbett's his name and I, I railroaded him so every time he, he was like oh we'll get a 125 GP bike and see how you got on then and I got on it and I won on it and we were going to England and then 2005 we have done MRO Apprentice Super Teens and like we were broke like you know we... I was about to say how do you you don't just suddenly wake up you go from a little bit of motocross to getting the whole thing, like 15 odd people and going over yeah. to Free Sisters how were you funding it at that exact point. Well, like um, just... my my dad was in jail. Yeah. Um, my mum was uh, it's just a single parent family. We live in a council house. My mum has no money. Harry Corbett was paying for everything. Right. Um, Harry Corbett was paying for everything, but he didn't have a load of money. He just mm. he used to race road racing himself. He really loved it. Um, he probably. I probably the son he never had, so he always wanted to go and do the English racing and do everything. And um, we didn't have loads of money. Like I remember in two thousand and five, we we're doing a pretty super teams, and we got the boat to Belfast Stranraer, and the boat uh, got caught red diesel coming off the boat in the lorry. We had drum, we had drums in the back of the lorry, and we had holes drilled in the floor of the lorry, and we we're uh, putting the hose into the big two hundred liter barrel in the back of the lorry and putting it down through the hole in the lorry and into the tank. And we used to just so anywhere we would have went would have pulled over and stopped, sucked the diesel and siphoned the diesel out into the tank of the lorry and carried on wherever we're going. Just fig- is, is Harry that like, did he used to have a motocross track? Yeah. Not, yeah, 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 I know Paris Harry. And Lisburn, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, um... uh, you'd have known him from BSB because once then <laughs> quite funny. <laughs> Uh, my first experience with red diesel was with Harry as well. <laughs> Standard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, what was your first experience with red diesel? It's similar, Harry, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that's just Harry, and he'll always. And don't I tell you something? I still speak to Harry. Harry's in holiday at the minute. He probably texts me nearly every day. He's in holiday, sends me pictures, and Harry will never be the same. But it's, there's no badness. It's just he just likes to. He likes to 
get his own wee wet. He likes a wee wind, small wind. Yeah. Red, getting about a wee bit of red these is a small wind. <laughs> well, he, he, used to, he owned the motocross track, Blair's, Blair's motocross track then, further on down the line, he owned Blair's motocross track. And I always remember, like, just, I'd have just drove around to the, the nearest uh, oil station or whatever it was, like uh, TDF Fuels it was, <laughs> and uh, we just filled up with red diesel. And I remember driving out, and I, was, uh, I drove a 530D BMW that I bought out of the auction cheap and I was buying and selling and I was messing about and driving out of TDF and they followed me and they pulled me in and they dipped me and they were for 500 quid fine and I was like no money like and I rung high I was like hi stop with red diesel here and they opened the boot and had drums of red diesel in the boot and everything and he had to come around from the motocross track and bail me out then <laughs> but it was just like did, it was the did, way we lived did you two have a discussion about plugging the electric van before this so you don't get pulled over <laughs> all of a sudden like no I'm a change man it's no longer red it's Quite, straight up battery zooming it's, it's completely wrong isn't it imagine plugging into the electric you know the only way to make that right if you start putting a magnet in your electric box because that's the only way you can like if Harry was driving my electric van he would need to have a magnet in the electric box because that's his wee win. <laughs> that's his wee win. Then he's driving for nothing. <laughs> do you reckon? That, what's it like? To do, even going back to that, do you reckon it is the future in your opinion? Do you, do you enjoy it? Are you, like, you can't even put the heaters on for God's sake. Hi, I think it has. I think it's probably the future, but it has to change. You know, there ha- it, it has to develop first before it'll completely take over. Like. You know, there's 200 mile radius in a van and you have to charge, you have to charge for like, just to have it plugged in a normal 13 amp plug, you have to charge for like two or three days to get a full charge. What about two those, three um, days. do you know what them petrol stations, them superchargers? Yeah, yeah but it's like two hours Is on it a supercharger. Hours? Right. I, th- well, I think from my, from asking questions, mm. I think it's like two hours. That's probably, to be fair though, from the last 10 years, it's t- taken such yeah. a massive jump that in another 10 years, it's probably going to yeah. be like a 20 minute thing in it and you'll just stop in for a coffee full charge again but putting red diesel it's not going to work <laughs> <laughs> that's true now so I, presumably you must you must have to credit uh, Harry massively from the beginning of your career to like get you that initial step onto a bike and then to bring you to England I mean it's a huge financial commitment so um, massively and Harry was more like Harry just focused his life around me racing motorbikes and we're going to the auctions and we're buying and selling cars and uh Two end of two. I rode for Colchester Kawasaki in two thousand and eight, and then I'll give you another plug there. <laughs> um, two thousand and uh, two th- end of two thousand and eight. Like we're broke, we're buying and selling cars at Ballyclare Auction. Like you're talking six, seven hundred pound cars. Or maybe I had a few of them sitting, and I rode for Astro Van Center in uh, at the second round of two thousand and nine at um at Alton Park. And I, I finished like fourteenth, and the the new the new shape six hundred Kawasaki had come out then, and Michael Tabedolf had a rider on it, and uh, a Gearlink Kawasaki had a rider on it, and said the rider wasn't really performing. Um, mm. he he couldn't he was struggling to qualify on the bike, and Michael came to us and says, look, this guy's I don't know whether the bike's not good enough or whether this guy's not good enough. Aye, and um. So he, he got me, he, he says, tell you what to do. He says, if you can give me a few quid, he says, you can ride the bike at, at Donington Park and see how, you, how see how you get on. So I got the few quid, I got the few quid, just sold, we just started selling cars that we had sitting, started selling them, uh, give Michael a few quid, went to Donington Park, railroad job again, went to Donington Park, went pole position, won the race, Donington. Uh, Thruxton was the weekend after. Michael says, "Well, you might as well like it's next weekend. You might as well just stay over, ride next week too." I think I finished. I can't don't work qualified. I finished second in the race. Like so, I, so going from like never being on the podium, not you know never being anywhere close. So it was probably like a top on a real good day. I was a top top eight man maybe on a real good day on a, on a decent bike from going from there jumping on this new Kawasaki that was unproven nobody had ever had a result on it not even in super sport at the time they hadn't had a result on it and I'm on it and I'm winning straight away Jesus that's unreal uh, do you mind if I just jump you back a little bit because yeah. I'm I'm always fascinated by uh, super teen days and I know you mentioned you you went over in 2005 because I was it was like finishing my story about red diesel <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, yeah that, that sort of era for me was such a golden period and I love whoever we have on the show if they ever mentioned super teens I always like love to like sort of pick and like uh, who was it so did you say you did that 2005 so that would have um, who were like who were the main people in the championship back then and that would have been the I remember. I, white bikes. I, I know the front, I, yeah, the white uh, KNS or something there. JNS. JNS bikes, yeah. Um, the, the front guy was Luke Jones. 
Um, but I can't really think of anything, anybody else that would have been in it back then. Did you just do a few rounds? No, I'd done the full season in 2005. And that's what I actually, I think I won two races that year. But I had not same again. I didn't really, wasn't really finishing great. And went to Knock Hill. I'm finishing my story. Went to Knock Hill. Got <laughs> caught coming off the boat with Red Diesel. Five hundred pound fine, and we we used to go and stay in an old uh, Renault Midliner, and we used to go and go on the lorry and stay in Airbnbs or stay in uh, travel lodges. Uh, got this five hundred pound fine, couldn't afford to put petrol on the bike. Never, we couldn't afford anything, and we went to uh, we went to Knock Hill, stayed in in the Renault Midliner. Um, just living real rough off like beans and bread, and just like real r- living rough. And um, in in Newton at the time, in Newton says. He's going. He's going decent this weekend. I'm going to give him a tire free of charge. You know, just just to help us along this weekend because wow. that tire he's riding on is rubbish. I went out. I went out on the Sunday and won. <laughs> I went out on the Sunday and won. So it was such a weird weekend from going from the down of having being caught with red diesel, like lit, staying, <laughs> treated like a victim. <laughs> just I just like buy, buying a quilt cover on the way up the road to lie in the back of the lorry all weekend. You know, like living rough off beans, like not completely no money at all. Ian Newton helping us out because he felt sorry for us because we're like gypsies <laughs> you, you know you know when you got on the bike was it was it all just fun at that point or did you like were you getting on the bike with a new tire going i can't mess this up or was it just like let's just because you're such a lively lovable like you're like i just i'm here for the crack the whole life's a ride but was that a serious situation uh, but uh, don't matter ever I, I i can't understand people that don't talk about how they don't get nerves because i always got nerves yeah. but i always believe it's because of care you know so I probably come across as being happy go lucky and all, but I actually think that's a distraction for me. Yes. You know, like I, I, like there's videos on YouTube and I'm singing on the grid and messing about. It's a complete distraction. I'm it's like a, that, I. Yeah. It's a complete like but you you just do it by talking, just like twenty four <laughs> seven talking. But that's what it is. It's just it's just it's just a distraction for me. If I you know, and I loved my racing. But I was nervous. Like, like I would have booked in the morning of a race because I was putting myself under that much pressure to win. And do you know, other than uh, Harry early on and then like Ian say buying that tyre, was there anybody else in that, like your first sort of few years that uh, came on board to help you? No, I remember a company called Scientec in Belfast that stickered the bike for me. And I thought this was massive. I remember just like that, he, like, that guy, like I'm only a young child, had never done anything. As I say, I come from a council estate with no money. With I wasn't given hope really as such. And this guy was like, "I'll sticker the bike, and it'd be nice to see my stickers on." And I was thinking, oh, "I've made it." I'm thinking, "I have made it." Like he's giving me stickers free of charge, you know. Um, not you know, there's there. Yes, there was people along the way, but nothing. No, there wasn't really. The people threw me a few quid here and there. And from uh, super teen days, usually you've, you've then got the choice to go up to like GP one two fives. Um, some people jump straight with six hundred, depending on your age. Where what was your next jump after? Yeah, so after the super teens, we had signed a deal to ride for a, a Brooklands Honda in one two five British Championship. And was that was that a paid ride or no no paid no paid and i can't remember the exact figure i have in my head like i have in my head like twelve thousand pound you had to bring 12 grand yeah i had to bring 12 grand yeah so like bearing in mind like i had nothing so harry like harry this man that has just nearly appeared into my life um was the man that was left with responsibility of doing that and i remember before the season started the guy, the guy had contacted us uh, and contacted us says, tell you what, um, we had give, I think we had give three grand at that stage. And he was like, uh, me and my wife's broke up and I've decided I'm not going to go racing. And we were like, right, well, what? We need, we need the money back. Like, no, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. Like, I've had to give the wife some money and I have to do this. And we ended up going and raced. This was 2006 now. We went to CB500 racing. And uh, for a team called TK Racing, I was signed for it and went to CB500 racing at New Year. And I remember going to Cadwell Park one weekend and we were driving down, like, so uh, whatever, I can't even remember what road you go to Cadwell now. And you drive down and we're, we're driving by the town that this guy lived. And we're like, I was like, hi, like two o'clock in the morning, I'm like six miles, it says, turn off to his house. And what happened to think of, hi, four miles, turn off to his house. We just got to the exit and went, now, turn off the motorway turned off found his house now I this guy had made me believe that he was a big timer lived in a completely council house but 
I didn't realize this at the time, but in England, they have like a PlayStation, like a normal townhouse. So, yep. so, uh, you're so like this guy's house, you're like six doors up, so PlayStation, right? We t- pulled up and we're shouting in through his letterbox, a load of curse words into his letterbox. He wouldn't come to the door because Harry shouting that much at him. And we're at the front door. We, we, we lifted fireworks out of the back of the van and we're setting fireworks off at the two o'clock in the morning, just let up the whole street. Whole, everybody, the blinds, the next door neighbours opened their blinds and looked out the window. And Harry shouted a load of abuse at them. They closed their blinds and went away back into the house and all. Like, just because we had no money. Like, so we're going to Cadwell to try and race and we, we had nothing and we're just scrimping and saving. And that, we had give this guy, now I think we'd give him three grand. And I think we possibly had maybe got 1,500 quid back. So he still owed us 1,500 quid and th- that was a massive amount of money. Like, Did he get the money? After screwing th- through th- the door? I think it ended up that we missed, like, I, missed I think it was 300 quid was, it, was, was what we got it down to. <laughs> What about the coppers up the road? Like, what, but, but like, we didn't know. We didn't realise the time. Like, not but, nothing <laughs> happened. We just got in the van and drove off. Like, but it wasn't that. Uh, yeah, the coppers we, were looking we went, through the blinds. We went back one other time in daylight, and that's when we worked out that uh, there was a police station not just up the road. <laughs> do, you reckon, you know? do you reckon the coppers looked out the blinds and just went, "Look, there's no way I, I'm going out to deal with that." No, no, no idea. Way. No, how did the <laughs> CB500 racing go? I uh, so I was racing with a wee like called Alex Galt from from Scotland, and Alex was super fast. And I don't know, I always reckon this bike was faster than mine, but sure, everybody says that. And um, we were racing, and uh, it was hard. It was hard. Like I was sort of finishing second, to Alex, and um, I would have went. I would have won all the club races, but then we went to the Super Club, which was more, the more important one. Alex would have beat me, and it, it was difficult, you know, but. It was it was a time that I really enjoyed it because looking back there was there's no pressure so you'd be five hundred racing like you know and you you think there is but there's not like see you would like what's dead interesting is that you like you took the financial risk of jumping into the deep like the deep end and going look I'm gonna pay for a ride we've just done this it's a pretty super teens you know what were you thinking with the CB500 at that point. And what I mean by that was is this just track time or was it this will lead me into the next step what. What was your thought process there? Or was it just, I need to go racing? Well, we needed to go racing. But Harry made me believe that this was the way to go. Like, like James Tosden went CB500 races. I was just about to say, You know, yeah. like, like, Harry had this... Harry was like a mentor in the fact that Harry made me believe that everything we'd done was very important, you know? So, like, if we went CB500 racing, like, like that was important. And that was my way of, of achieving greatness. Yeah. You know, and that's how I'd done it. Like, um... So, but we took it seriously. Now I must say, I loved see the people, the, the people that I was racing against. I got so friendly with so many of them, and even now on like Facebook or whatever, like I'm friends with quite a few of them that I raced with in CB five hundred, and it, they were just a, they were just a normal man going to work going to work and do it and then wanting to ride his motorbike the weekend and then he would have went racing at the weekend and there was this young whippersnapper just going to complete and utter menace <laughs> how, <laughs> that, how old were you then yeah uh, so what would have been then i was 14 four, 15 i was 15 and then i, I went straight from that if cb 500 racing at new year the next year we entered british super sport <laughs> no super stock no there was, was no super stock back then was this uh, super stock was only introduced in 2008 and this was Harry's idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the right way to do because that's what Harry said. That's what I mean. So Harry, Harry just yeah, went, yeah. you know what? Let, let's. No, no. Harry knew that we had to go to BSB, and he, we, to be fair, he had tried to get me there the year before in one two five Grand Prix. Yeah, it just didn't work. Um, so he he knew in the big picture that you have to go and you have to race for the fast men, and that's how you get fast. What what, what was Harry doing to raise this money? You know, it was just he just. Well, he Harry had then opened the motocross practice track back in Northern Ireland, right. and. The motocross practice track was going well. It was just, it turned out to be sand actually. Um, it turned out to be sand, and it was it, like it was getting massive numbers at the weekends. Good. And he was just pumping all the money into me racing. He was pumping, all, but still, like we went British Super Sport. Like I, I nearly feel like I've, I'm going to beat the same drum from the start to the finish here. Um, from we went British Super or we went CB500 racing. We didn't really have much money, but then the motocross track started going good, and we pumped all the money in the Super Sport. Then so we still we still didn't really have any money, but in the scale, you know, in the scale, we needed a whole lot more. So that's why we still didn't have any. Aye. 
And uh, did you just, I mean, did you just buy like a second hand bike and do it up or what? Uh, what? We bought a bike off Bill Smith in Chester. Uh, and just uh, sort of run, run yeah. out of a pop up type of thing. Yamaha R6, run out of a pop up, went the. Went to the first round, didn't qualify. Went to went the second round, didn't qualify. Um, and uh, the second round was at the second. And I, I'll, I'll go a different story here. Um, that uh, on the way to the second round, we had met uh, Dave Tyson at Alton Park at a track day. Dave Tyson had nothing to do with BSB. Not a thing like Dave Tyson, no interest. And I think Dave actually said this whenever he was on that I was the guy that got him in the BSB in the first place. So uh, we talked to him at Alton Park at this track day. Um, he came to Thruxton, which was the second round. I didn't qualify. Me and Harry is completely depressed. Um, and and um, we were lying in the motorhome after qualifying was over, and Dave was standing outside the awning. And um, he, he happened to mention to somebody, like, if I think that bike's bad, like, I'll just buy it. And Harry jumped up off the sofa and ran outside and says, What'd you say? He says, Well, well if you know, if you think the bike's not good enough, I'll buy that R6. Harry said, Dead on, buy it. How much are you giving me for it? And done a deal there and then with Dave Tyson to buy the R6. And uh, we went to went to Nick Morgan and bought Periba's old uh, ZX6. Of Nick Morgan, wow. and that was my first. That was a sort like of good this, bike. But that, I, that was a good bike, like uh -huh. you know. And then I went to the next. Can, row, can you remember like, roughly what sort of money that was? No idea. Not a yeah. stab at a dog. That, uh, I mean, it was yeah. It would have been like a tr proper trick bit of kit. And uh, it, did that instantly have a good? I well, I went to the next round, like and. Dumb, I wasn't fast like I went, but I went to the next round and qualified and like bearing in mind there's like 40 people trying to qualify them Top for end. super sport round and they're like when you're looking at the front guys like you're talking about Michael Laverty mm -hmm. um, Michael Laverty Ian, Ian Larry um, and the pads that spike um, they're like loads was Rogie in it back then? Uh, no I think Rogie was doing he was doing the super stock 1000 back then mm -hmm. um, but me and Alistair Seeley went to the very first round to, at the same time we had never done a BSB went to the first round and nearly the two of us qualified wow nearly the two of us qualified and then um, so but then Seeley qualified the second round and I qualified at the third but I started qualifying so I qualified for every race but I was in a crash with Guy Sanders in Modelo Park in 2007 and uh, there was somebody uh, so Guy was like running maybe fifth in the race high sided coming out a big fast right hander high sided got up the run off the track and get collected in the middle of the track and came spinning and there was somebody in front of me and I couldn't see and the guy in front of me just moved out of the way and I just ploughed in the guy then and I all like that was a, that was a really hard time in racing because like guy guy I remember in the medical center and, and what happened in the medical center and, and guy guy succumbed to his injuries and it was it was difficult to deal with like I'm 16 like and I just to me that was hard work hard work you know that the... I actually ended up riding for so uh, guys his dad continued in the sport yeah. running the uh, Harry, yeah, man. Uh, running the Harry Bow Triumph mm -hmm. team, and um, I still keep in touch with Derek now. He's uh, he holds a, a, a place in my heart, and uh, he's a he's a very unique character. There's nobody like him, but um, yeah, I love, like I love him a bit. And uh, I remembered this is just a little story. He used to so uh, John Gar Gareth and Jane, who sort of run the paddock or have done up until yeah. this year, oh. very strict in terms of where you park and like the the plan everything out and like very very you know strict and um they always used to park Derek. so do you know brand's hatch you go from the top paddock oh, right through the, the tunnel and then as you go down there's like a bit, little bit of a bottleneck where scrutiny even is uh -huh. and they always used to park Derek there because Derek used to act as like an unofficial um like paddock warden and if anyone was riding a, pa a pa no paddock scooter after like seven o'clock he used to stop them and just take the keys out and <laughs> not give them the back <laughs> i was because I, I remember i was just a little kid doing one two fives at the time talking to Derek and he would like stop like Shaky Burn or like a super bike rider and they would the thought like he was doing an autograph or something and then he'd just take the scooters and no scooters after seven o'clock <laughs> but he was like yeah he's just very um He's just a funny man, mm -hmm. funny man. But yeah, like I said, an unbelievably tragic incident. And uh, I think, was that the last time that BSB raced at Mondello? Yeah, that was the last time, yeah. And I felt like I'm only 16 and I thought, like, was that my fault? But it wasn't. Like, I, there's nothing I could have done. No matter how much experience I had, I was in that situation where there's nothing I could have changed to change that. But it, it 
brings everything into perspective and you think do you like do i want to do this like this was what might happen you know up until then i was like ah yeah it's dangerous yeah but you don't think about it like no. never broke a bone i'd never like i'd had my credit never like broke bones. Re- massive uh, reality shock yeah like really bringing it home yeah um yeah it must have been a struggle especially at such a young age like you you don't you think when you're 16 you think you know everything and you think you understand the world and stuff but you don't ah, it made me grow up a lot I bet. you know so it did. um but it, so it was difficult and but but i met lots of nice people because <laughs> like then like we were running a 600 kawasaki that all, we bought off msa so we're probably still struggling with setup and the general things um and because guy sanders rode for gearlink kawasaki at the time then mike michael david had had said to us look if you're struggling if you're struggling to get the bike back together like he wanted me to go get back out so he helped me get the bike fixed and then any races in future we had a, we had a, a relationship then with michael and norma at, at gearlink and would have pulled down and michael would have helped me with suspension and done stuff like that there and then um i rode for um, I rode for I rode for Colchester Kawasaki in two thousand and eight. Now that Luke, uh, Luke sends his regards, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. L- Luke, Another what, plug. L- <laughs> Luke didn't actually own it back then. Mm-hmm. Aye, but it, um, was it uh, Ian? Ian was his name Ian? I think his name was Ian. <laughs> I have a head injury. <laughs> we we'll, just haven't got to this part of the story yet. <laughs> um, Ian, I'm pretty sure his his name's Ian, but I went and stayed at their house and all, and they were a lovely family, like, and they they supported me in a massive way, like with a lorry and like a bike and me- sent a mechanic from the shop, and they, they were massive support. The the 600 Kawasaki in 2008 just wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and there's other people that was riding it, like um, Luke Stapleford rode one in 2008, and me and Luke would have been finishing like eighth ninth sort of and it just wasn't the bike wasn't good enough there was no there was no amount the front and so after that year in super sport did they introduce the super stock 600 class yeah and then that was the cheaper option so we went that way Fantastic. and yeah. oh brilliant and so was it a case of quite a lot of the super sport field from the year before sort of split off and half went in the super stock and no no there wasn't very many uh, dropped back from super sport right okay no just it was few, more yeah. just people dro- coming up from 125s you know and you yeah, had like a jess trailer what was re- raced it then um uh, jess trailer rode for mss on the kawasaki um luke stapleford raced um luke mossy wasn't in it in 2008 uh then was, i can't remember luke jones <laughs> raced um a yamaha um so you had you had quite a few boys in it lee johnson won the championship that year and it was like it was good, but there wasn't that many had stepped back from Super Sport. I was probably maybe there was three of us or something, and I was one of them. And were you still doing it as a sort of privateer with Harry? Then well, no, well it was Colchester Kawasaki, and they were putting in a lot of support. Like so, they had given me a lorry, like a lorry that Harry. We used to fly over to Colchester. Harry, Harry would have got into the lorry and would have drove then to whatever racetrack we went to. So Harry was still very much involved in everything. At this oh, point. oh no, like Harry's like the main man, like doing everything for me, you know. Um, no, it was, it was still at the f- bring money, like, but it wasn't like it wasn't, it was easy, like, it was easy. It was probably one of the easiest years of that period. And me and Harry, me and Harry went racing, and we, um, we went, took Nick, was the mechanic's name that he used to come with us out of the shop, and uh, he used to help us, and it was, it was great, like, and but. I, it was sad in the fact that they put in so much support and I couldn't really get them the results to to thank them for it because it just w- weren't competitive. Mm-hmm. You know? And even when you drop back into Superstock 600, I presume your results were a lot better than the, what that had been in Supersport just because it was a uh, lower level. Yeah, I think my best result was fourth. Uh, finished eighth in the championship. You know, In 2008. In 2008. But then Colchester Kawasaki was like putting all this money in and like we're not really getting results and uh when so when it started 2009 well it didn't go to the first round because we didn't have any money at all i remember i remember sitting at the first round going let me like, what we were sitting in a cafe in Duke, and i just remember sitting there mate just me and harry sitting and going hi like oh, how are we ever gonna do is that it finished like is that us done and he was like no 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 like harry every optimist not a mission no we're gonna work out a plan we'll get this sorted on the astro van center sorted out a, a 600 kawasaki went to Alton park qualify I, I was in the i was in the last chance qualifier whatever it was back then which is like from 30th onwards um, I finished second in it. So say I qualified 32nd and for qualified 32nd, finished 14th in the race. And then that's whenever Michael Michael called and he was like, look, the guy that's riding this bike's not qualifying. 
do you want to take a run on the bike? And I was like, Donington Park, um, we had to just bring a small amount of money to Michael. To us, it was a large amount of money. So we started selling off cars we were buying at the, that we'd bought the auction matter, like 12 cars built up of cheap, like six, 700 pound cars, just sold everything we had and started going racing, started paying Michael the money, went to Donington Park, first round, first time on it, qualified fastest, won the race, went to trucks in the next weekend, I don't know where I call it, finished second, went to the next race, I finished third. Like so I nearly railroaded Michael from giving me one go on the bike to see what the bike was gonna be up to and see whether the bike's good enough or not, till all of a sudden I'm like running right at the front. And this is Gailing Gailing Kawasaki, yeah. Super Stock Six Hundred. Super Stock Six Hundred Michael and Norma developed. And um who was who were your main uh, competitors that year? Uh, so that 2009, um, I ended up winning the championship. Uh, Luke Mossy finished second. Uh, Luke Jones finished third. Luke Stapleford, I think, was fourth or fifth. Um, so like, you know, yeah, no, proper doers. Yeah, like, yeah, no fa- like a fast boy. He's like, mm. you know, um, to be fair, uh, I started late, so I was like a couple. Of, so I was starting from behind, but then Luke Mossy had come back from Spanish one two five championship, and he was fast. Like mm-hmm. he was fast, and if if look if nothing went wrong with Luke, I struggled to work with him. Um, like me and Luke would have had a real good battle if he hadn't have been if he hadn't have, if he had have been stay if he had a stayed on or whatever. But he just crashed a couple of times, and where he crashed, I stayed on, and I was I was consistent. Like. Was on, and did the championship go down to like the last race of the season type of thing, or was it? Did you win it by quite a bit? I'll just I'll just I'll, I like to give you a story. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I won the championship in the gravel trap. Uh, when Silverstone was around uh, the, the way the championship finished was uh, Silverstone and then the very last round was Open Park went to Silverstone I had to finish fifth or better to win the race like bear in mind I hadn't been on the, off the podium the whole time I sat in the gear link bike I, I wasn't off the podium like it was fast I'm thinking fifth to win, win the championship this is easy so but I had that many different people telling me that many different things to do. So I had people saying, um, people saying to me, ah, oh, just go and ride around and get the points and finish. And I had people like, and then I had Harry saying, go and win the race, win the race. That's the way to do it. Just win the race. So I was like, am I young? Like I'm, I was young. Like I was, I was seven, 18. I was 18 and I probably hadn't matured enough. I didn't think right. I didn't know what to do. So I'm like, I think I was lying. I'm like sick. And I'm like, it was nearly at that point where I made a decision and I was like, so to get the points here or do I go for it, go for it, go for it, just go for it. And I crashed, I crashed and it was only that I crashed and I'm back and I'm like, I'm in tears. Now there's one more round, so I still had another round at Olden Park to go. Um, but Did you go into the last r- r- round Luke, leading? Luke Mossy got disqualified from the race for having his bike tuned. The very last round of the season. No, oh, at Silverstone at Silverstone. And the, the, oh, do you know how that situation? Just a random the, dino. Did it was get... a random test. And Jesus. Da, I don't tell you something. If Luke Mossy listens to this, he'll probably maybe still think this day that I protest him. And I genuinely didn't. I wouldn't do it. And he, like, but he they just. I don't know whether they, I can't remember whether they dynoed him or they rather just stripped the spike or whatever, and that was tuned or yeah, whatever he had. He had, he, had he had something done to it that wasn't right, and. Uh, and I won the championship from from crashing, which was so terrible. that was the second last round. Second last round, I rode Super Sport the last round. Oh, and then after he got disqualified, I won the, the I won the championship wow, with a round the, to go. A round to go. Yeah, so you were dominant of the season. Then. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Like I wasn't off the podium from a from a step on the gear link bike. I never, I never left the podium. That's incredible. That no, cr- wow, no crashes throughout that up to that point. No, not in a race. Not in a race. I, I nearly went through a spell at one stage where I was like, I would have crashed in every qualifying session, but I would have always qualified sort of top, like front row nearly, um, but I would have crashed. And But I was just trying to be fast. I was just trying. I was, and then from, um, you obviously you stepped up to Super Sport for the last race of the season. Did you then go full-time Super Sport the year after? Uh, one more story, sorry. Um I went to uh, Knock Hill. Knock Hill was actually the only time that I finished off the podium. There was two rounds at Knock Hill, and um, I went to Knock Hill. Now, obviously, f- by this stage, I'm thinking I'm the man of this championship. Like I can win this. Like I, I like, I'm not a com- I'm not. A- I'm not a cocky person, so I'll not come out in the open and say it. But in my head, in the van with me and Harry on the way to a race, I'm thinking, I can, like, I can win this championship. Like, I am the man. Went the first race at Knock Hill, I finished fourth, and I came back to the van. I'm quite happy, and I'm like happy about it. And I got back to the motorhome, and Harry ate the face off me. And he says, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, 
I finished fourth. That's a good result. And he was like, Jamie, he says, you just rode around there. He says, like, you, he says, you're not even trying. He says, you're in fourth in the battle that you could have been leading the race. He says, you're not even trying to pass him. He says, you're just riding. And I was like, I got myself worked up. Before I got on for the second race, Harry got me to go on the push bike, ride to the front gate and ride back again on the push bike. And I was sweating in my leathers and all. And, and like, I'm, I'm knackered. And I got back and we went round to the awning to Michael the bit off. And he was like, Harry, what are you doing? He was like, he, he needs to get some blood born. Like he, he's out of order. He needs to, he needs to push in this race. And Mike was like, well, he done right now. No, he did not. He should have won that last race. He, should, he needs to win this one. And like, so like I have a pressure on me and I went out. Um, I can't remember who whole shot at it, but I think I, I took the lead in the first lap and I took the lead in the first lap and it wasn't, it wasn't, nobody passed me since. <laughs> There's not a mission anybody was getting past me in that race. So, like, so when you were riding the bike, were you just more mainly thinking oh, of Harry? I was pulling the handlebars off it. <laughs> I was, there was no mess. And if anybody passed me, I would put them in the gravel. Like, I was so much blood boiling. The fact that I thought I had done well in the last race and and he yet the face off me. And in hindsight, I'm glad he done it because, like, it, 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 I probably was riding in my comfort zone, but I, I needed the ride out. I need the push. And I, so it just. Um, I can't, I can't. What a fella. Tremendous story, that. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, so from um, last round, you did Super Sport and then full time Super Sport the year after 2010. Full, yeah, so. We went to we went to a big horn. The team at the end of two thousand nine won the championship. I think pff, made it now. That's me. I'm sorted. I'm sorted. Um, uh, went to a big horn. The team. I remember going up in the big mass of American motorhome, and they're all sitting in the motorhome, and they're like, "Jamie, you understand? You have to bring some budget with you here." You're joking. Yeah. Uh, so I won the super trucks. You have to bring some budget with me. And I was like, I probably expected it. And I was like, the bikes are real good. They hadn't won a race, but they were they were good enough to win. And I thought. I said, I had no problem thinking they were going to say maybe 15, 20 grand. And they said, look, you're riding well. Um, usually it would be £90,000 for the year. Because you're riding so good, so good, we'll do it to you for 70. And me and Harry just went, our dinner's ready. And got up and walked out. Like, like I like I live in a council house. Like at that stage, I, I live at home with my mum, just me and my mum. At that stage, our house was maybe worth 60 grand. Like Harry has, his own, Harry has two kids of his own, living with a wife. Like, Harry, like we couldn't pay seventy grand to race a motorbike. What What were you feeling at exact point? You know, get up and leave. You're like pissed off. You've done everything beyond brilliant leading up to that, and you're like, "This is my break. This is my moment." Sat down, seventy grand, and you must have just well. How did you I, feel? I, I, but you think something else is going to come along. You know, oh, like yeah. I'm still quite young. I still, you know, and I just think it'll all work out. It's worked out up to now. Like we've always had this battle of money. Money has been a massive thing. We've always had this. It'll, something will happen and it'll be okay. And Michael stepped in. Uh, Michael stepped in, gave us a super sport bike and, and gear link, Michael and Norma, and they helped, they helped me. But the bike just wasn't up to scratch. Like, um... Uh, ben Wilson was riding the other bike, and Chris Martin was both riding Super Sport, and like they were in, they were in good Kawasaki's. I, I can't remember one of them running the Kier engine. I can't remember which one, but they were running good fast bikes, and I was like on the, their old parts and stuff, and like even tires, like using their old tires and just like getting by in two thousand and ten, and um, I just never really worked. Do you know when you think of um? The f like from from your early from how it all started and uh, like the story that you've kind of told to get to the point of winning National Superstock Six Hundred is like it's incredible. Like no one you think of you, you've listed them people that the pe yeah the people that you were racing against like the the some of the people you're racing against of are like multi money's no object they've had bikes since a young age they're like out practicing they'll be in spain for like weeks and weeks at practice practice so taking everything into consideration to get to the point of winning a super stock is is almost impossible yeah uh, but like you it. say you, it, i mean i think people from the outset think to themselves like and people starting starting up as well they probably can't really afford to get to the top in bike racing as in like the parents and the families and whatever but they, they think to themselves well I'll, I'll invest a bit like a good amount like a bit more than i can afford in like one two fives and six hundreds but i think my like son or daughter is a bit special we'll win super stock 600 and then the doors will open and everything will go it just gets more and more expensive you win stock 600 like you say to get to the next level it's it's in terms of you think that there's going to be loads of teams there like talent spotting and like open doors and it like you say and it's it is a, it's 
It's an issue. Ruthless. I think, yeah, it's a, such a shame. Do you know what? We had, um, we had Jonathan Ray on the podcast yesterday. He was talking a similar sort of time. And he he was saying how lucky he was. There was, at the time, Red Bull were putting, uh, basically, talent spotting. And they picked him up and put him in the factory on the team. And, and probably without a few key moments like that, who's to say, you know, it, those doors couldn't have been open. If those doors weren't opened up for Jonathan, who, you know, it, it might not have led to where he's became, but it's it is such a shame that um, we don't have like a better structured. I mean, like people have said in the past, like if you win say Super Stock Six Hundred, really there should be some sort of like either from the ACU or from the championship or something. Yeah. There should be some sort of reward that you get a, a, a step in the next category and like yeah, it it. it it just seems like such a crying shame that like someone that's clearly got the talent and the ability has got to that point, which is almost impossible. But without money and support, you, it's you you kind of uh, go to the next yeah. level. No, it's, it's sad. Like it's sad, and it was very difficult. So two thousand ten was my last year racing in a British Championship, and then like I'm coming away and I'm watching these riders that I'm quite obviously that in my head I'm better than. Like, and you I'm beat last fast, year, yeah, and I'm mm-hmm. faster than, and they're signing for these big teams, and I know the truth. I know why they're signing because they're coming up the cabbage, but. I just didn't have it, and I could, you know, and it's it was sad, and it was depressing. And um, Glenn Irwin was actually going the opposite way to me. So, um, two thousand ten, no, two thousand two thousand nine, when I was racing Superstocks, I remember, I remember Snedderton, and I, I think I finished second or third at Snedderton, and Glenn was coming, but so I was in England racing, had no real backup apart from Harry, I had no support, and nobody really s- sponsored me. Glenn was coming from Ireland. He was winning everything in Ireland. He, 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 Glenn was, like, was great at creating publicity for himself and creating attention and getting back in. And he was far better than I am at that. And he was caught in the opposite way. So Snedder and Glenn finished 32nd. And he had like loads of sponsorship and like loads of hype around him. And I was on the podium and I had nothing. Like, and we were going the complete opposite way, you know. So I was going backwards, really. And Glenn was Glenn was just starting to make a name for himself and getting forward and forward and forward. And that's where, that's where I wasn't good enough. And I, I don't I tell you, I am who I am, and I wouldn't change it for the world. But I just couldn't. I can't beat my own drum. Like I'm, a, I'm a. I I am I like the underdog mentality. I love, and it's maybe to do with my background and how I've got there. But I, I love I love the fact of sitting on a start line, thinking, really, all these boys should beat me, but I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take it to them, like you know. And I love I love that underdog mentality. I love I love starting a race and somebody else and knowing everybody's thinking that I should be beat, but but winning, you know. And I and I love that and. Um, that and but that same mentality is what got me where I am. That's the same mentality is what had me from uh, going BSB racing and not having no money, but achieving better than I should have. You know, and and that's why I got to where I am. And was was it around this sort of time that you could uh, you could obviously see there was options um, like say over here and the, with the TT and there's the option to, uh, to to go and race on the roads and financially it's you can. Um, you don't have to like be say paying teams seventy grand like you say, but there's actually options to go and be competitive for a lot less money and actually sort of make a name for yourself. And there is a potential to start earning money. Yeah, I tell you what. Even before you answer that, what was before all this? What was Harry's view on road racing at this point? No, no, road racing is not a thing you do. Harry, Harry done. That was Harry's background. Harry yeah. was a road racer himself. And he just didn't see no future in it. Like, I don't know, Harry probably seen people getting killed or whatever at road racing. He was probably a bit ropey himself. He's a bit Winnet or Bennett, Harry, like, so he'd have been leading races and crashed. And he was like, uh, he, he was worse, worse as hurting his sleeve. And that's why he races motorbike too. You know, he, he, he tried ever. He tried everything and he tried everything and he might have crashed and or he might have won the race. Um and like he, I always listen to stories of him talking about all these old road racers, but Harry was like, There's no way you're ever going road racing. So uh, end of two thousand and ten, Alistair Sealy, now me, me, bearing in mind me and Alistair had never ever uh, even we, we, first BSB round we went to none of the two us ever qualified both of us won the Super Stock Championships in 2009 He, I won 600 and he won 1000 in 2009 so we went from we had a massive turnaround but the def- Alistair was like riding for Taz and, and British Superbikes like and the, probably the biggest difference was 
Alistair is really, really, really talented. Um, but like he was doing the Northwest as well, and I always probably looked at Alistair, maybe looked up to him a bit, and I thought like I go home and I'm going to race the Northwest, and I was looking at Glenn coming from home with loads of backing, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to go home 2011, and I'm going to go home and I'm going to race at home, and I'm going to do the Northwest, I'm going to gather up loads and loads of support, and then I'm going to come back to England, back to BSB, mm-hmm. and with loads of backing behind me, and I'll have loads of money, and that's I'll make it then. And um, but me and Harry ended up splitting then in the end of two thousand and ten. It was and it was a very hard decision to make because I, I remember I remember and there was plenty of tears involved and I remember going to Harry's house one day and just saying like Harry, it's not working. I don't I don't want to go racing and just like hope that we've got enough money to get us through the weekend and hope that you know we're just we're not this isn't right this is never going to work like i just didn't believe at that state anymore and i was probably getting older and i just i, I went and got a normal job i started working for my uncle as an engineer and um, making gates and rails and uh, i just thought i just thought it's probably it might not work but i'm going to come home i'm going to try and gather up lots and lots of support i'm going to go and do the northwest i'll g- enjoy that and i'll just come went and done the northwest in 2011 completely fell in love completely it was like this is unbelievable and then it actually ended up it was cancelled that year but um I, I got in contact with ryan farquhar then and i was like ryan you know, I've done the Northwest. I'm BSB, like I'm Superstock 600 champion. Like I'm, I'm fast. Like, will you give me a chance on one of your Super Twins? And I remember, I remember then, how, um, Ryan asked me for. He says, "Now, Jamie, he says, have you crashed this Super Twin?" He says, "I need six grand off you to fix it." And no, he wasn't looking the six grand up front, you know, so it wasn't like I was paying six grand for the ride. It's just that I had the promise and that if I crashed that bike, I could give him six grand. Now, um. But look bearing at that in now, mind, when we nothing. were when we were with Harry, we were it was always willing and dealing and just trying to make it happen. And whenever I was split with Harry, I, I made a promise to myself that I'm never going to owe anybody any money. And I was like, so I'm not going to do it. So I went to ride for Ryan, and I'm very conscious of this, and I'm not very. And I was like, uh, right, well, I'll find you the money. So I went around a couple of sponsors, and I, I think I got like four grand gathered up. Like a sponsor said, "Have you crashed the bike? I'll give you a thousand pound towards it." Say so on and so forth. Got four grand gathered up, so I'm two grand short. And I went to the bank. I went to the bank and asked for a loan because of this time I'd got a job. I'd got a job. I was working for Michael John, so um, I have a few quid coming in, minimum wage, a minimum wage coming in and I got a, I got a loan of two grand off the bank so I went to Ryan and I was like there's a letter from four people saying if I crash that bike and wreck it they'll give a thousand pound each and there's a two there's my bank statement to show you the so that I can pay the other two grand, and and then that's how so that's how I got riding for Ryan. I went to Ulster Grand Prix and rode for him, and then uh, I rode then uh, Ulster Grand. I was in love, like I was in love with road racing. Did you just do the twins at first? Yeah, yeah, I just done the twins. Just the last of end of two thousand and eleven, I rode the twins. At, I think we've done. I had done the Ulster Grand Prix, we'd done Scarborough, we'd done Killaleen. I actually went to the Mid Antrim as well, but uh, Mid Antrim was it was bomb scare that year, and it was called off. The mid anthem was before the Ulster Grand Prix. We went there to try and get me ready. Um, so I'd done the practice day on the Friday, but then there was a bomb scare on the Saturday, so it was off. So I went straight into the Ulster Grand Prix. I think I finished fourth in the Super Twin race, but like I was on Ryan's Super Twin, like it was the great motorbikes, like mm-hmm. you know. But Ryan taught me so much. So then 2012, Ryan's like, Well, what do you want to do now? And I was like, Full your <laughs> Of course, I'm going to full your Like, BSB was completely out of my head. Probably what I was thinking then was like, I'll go road racing, I'll make a name for myself road racing, and then I'll go to BSB. You know, I'll go back to BSB then. But I, I loved road racing. I loved going to national road races. Like, 2012, like I went to Ryan. So I, I ended up cutting my hours down to three days a week for my uncle. So I went, I went to. I went to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, left work on a Wednesday, went to my granny, lived right next door, went to my granny's, got showered, changed, got my dinner, drove to Ryan's, stayed at Ryan's house on a Wednesday night and got completely blitzed <laughs> on a Wednesday night. Uh, work at, while working at the motorbikes, up on the Thursday morning, worked at the motorbikes all day Thursday, went to the race Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Uh, bearing in mind, I, hadn't, I, I, I bought a race lorry in 2000. 
2013, uh, 2012, I bought a race lorry. Full of red. So, <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't because see everybody that was coming to help me at this age, like they're all far too straight for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so they weren't, they weren't news red. Um, and we went, and so they would have, they would have drove up the Ryan's where I'd have had the bikes loaded into the race lorry and we went to the National Road Race and, and raced all weekend and then raced all weekend and then got blitzed on Saturday night again. And I just couldn't understand, like, bearing in mind from my, you'll know from being BSB, I didn't drink like I. Whenever I raced BSB, I'd have had maybe I would have been out with my mates for maybe two or three times at the start of the off season, um, just to have good crack with my school friends, and then like from definitely from Christmas onwards, I was like full focus, like was like training flat out. I wasn't wouldn't go anywhere near and I'll, I'll drink like and but then I went with Ryan and I was like. Like we were drink, we were getting drunk on Wednesday night, and we we're getting drunk on Saturday after the race was over. And I was like, "This is a whole different life. Like this is, it's so much relaxed. I loved, I loved the life I was living. Like I was working Monday to Monday to Wednesday. I was, um, even whenever I was working, I was getting up in the morning. I was getting up in the morning, going to like a spin class in the morning, going to work, and then coming home. And I would either went to a spin class or would I went to a training session in the evening, or else I went chasing sponsors. So I'm living my whole life around racing work bikes, you know, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Mm-hmm. Class. And so uh, you did that full year of world racing the following the following year with the, uh, just talk through like all the K- main events K- that you did. Team, yeah. Yeah, with Ryan's, with Ryan's team. So I rode 2012 for Ryan's team and like that was probably my first Northwest because like the year before I was yeah. riding a bike wasn't like I was riding a super stock bike that a, a guy had changed from a road bike it probably wasn't competitive or anything but then Ryan had me on a, a super twin and a super stock a thousand Kawasaki um, so like I'm going like I'm a newcomer to TT I actually won the fastest newcomer at Isle of Man TT that year in 2012 so what, like, what speed was that then? Uh, I actually never even won it for my speed on the bike bike. My speed on the bike bike, I only done 121 in my first year. The thing was shaking the head of itself. But it it worked on it works on an average actually, and it was to do with I can't remember the how far your time is off the winner. And I so I won it in the Super Twin race because it was fast. I'm real fast in the Super Twin, so I won it off because because it was so close. I think I finished fifth or something in the Super Twin race because it was so close to the leader. And then that's how I won. But I didn't even know that I won it. Like so, they're announcing all the awards at the ceremony, and I'm like, all oh, right, that's dead on. So waiting. I think I won a couple of silver replicas or something, and I was like waiting on the replicas. Uh, fastest TT newcomer Jimmy Hamilton. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's like, the beer? <laughs> and I remember I went up and they, they give you a watch back then. They give you a green London watch. So I'm like, oh, that's nice. I put it down and I'm getting my trophies and everything. That's cool to be fastest TT newcomer and all. So I went home and I'm looking at this watch. I'm going, that's nice. It's got its own wee passport and all. I thought, that's cool. Like, looked it up on the internet. Seven and a half grand. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? <laughs> I think it's obviously a bigger deal than what I thought it was. <laughs> but uh, you still got the watch. Uh, I, I bought a watch rocker for it, and it sits in my bedroom, winding up every day. <laughs> I love it. I, I only wear it special occasions, like Christmas Day. I'll, you know, I, wear I it. never outside the house. It goes nah, straight from there. Nah. <laughs> I'm not walking down the streets here. It's like, nearly oh. one of them things where I, I love the watch, right? And I always say, oh, like, but it always comes out in times where it's going to get rash for some Aye. reason. Like, like I'll wear it to. The Irish Racer Awards, they're not even called the Irish Racer Awards now in January and in Northern Ireland here and all the top racers are here. You wear a Dickie Bow and all. And I, like, I'll wear it then. And they're always big nights. Like, they're always big nights where you're going to get completely blitzed and probably fall. But but that's the only time that, that that's the only time that somebody's going to be there that will appreciate a, it. Looks a brilliant night that. Uh, tell us a bit more about that because I've seen the Black Tie event, but what's, uh, what's that all about? Who runs it? Uh, so I think... I think Paul Lindsay was the guy that started it that run Irish Racer, and now uh, Stephen Watson of BBC runs it, and it's it's just a great event. Like it usually runs at the end of January. Um, obviously everybody's filled Dicky Bow job up, and um, so it's just real fancy. And you, you at the very start, you, at the very start, I was like, uh, I won like Red Bull Young Rider of the Year when I won the British Championship in two thousand and nine, and like so they give you two tickets, and me and Harry would have rocked up. Bear in mind, none of Harry doesn't drink. I didn't drink then. You know, I'm only a wee young lad. So, but then the longer it went down the line, once I went road racing and I gathered up like a load of friends and all whatever. Like I'd have started like I'd have bought a table. Like, oh actually like, well, I'll buy a table, I so there's like twelve people at the table and like people at other tables and then it just got into a full messy affair. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the difference in road racing, have isn't you it? Ever, have you ever been? Where? That, that event. Oh, no, I don't get invited. I try to get in, but they just tell me to fuck off all the time. <laughs> like, so. These two boys are maybe different now. I like, love it. They used to be VIPs. Possibly now nah, that you are big timers. Now we've had, now I've had like, you on the podcast. No, no, you are big. <laughs> you are big timers. With the stars, now, like, with the stars. No, 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 just no, roll no, up. The, you just roll up the door and then get Johnny Ray in your podcast. Like you, you know, you know the right numbers there, right? Like. <laughs> still wouldn't let me in though. <laughs> so, definitely still um, wouldn't let me in. So after after that year, so that was two thousand twelve. Did you say? Yeah, that was 2013. 2013, stay with Ryan that yeah, year? Yeah, so I stayed with Ryan. Uh, I, I, I got 600 from a guy called John Dugan in the south, and it was in, it was in Ryan's colours, and, and the whole team was done up like Vauxhall. Um, so it was a Vauxhall KMR the team. Re- the, the red and the white, Levitt, oh, it looked yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that, yeah. And, and John that gave me the 600 then, had, like everything was in Ryan's colours. I had my own lorry then, and like so the whole thing looked great. Like I had my own lorry, it was all, but Vauxhall themselves painted. My, my lorry white for me I got it all stickered in the KMR Vauxhall colours that like the, the, big, the awning sitting beautiful of three bikes this is massive for me so bearing in mind like I went from I went from short circuit race not having a penny till probably if you turned up the road race you'd have thought I was a millionaire like you know like the whole thing looked proper and that was Ryan's influence like Ryan it had to be immaculate or Ryan wasn't interested like and I cr- crashed Ryan's bikes in 2012 and 13 and stuff and like there would have been like a brake lever with a scrape on it and I'd have been like shit that's dead on it'll do lovely it's not broke and I no no it needs, needs replaced and it probably aggravated me at the time but it taught me a lot as far as you know that you're riding that motorbike and you have to go out and try and you know you're trying you're risking your life riding it to start with and you're trying to win on it you know the, you can't cut corners you can't cut corners and Ryan taught me a lot of that and um the whole thing looked really, really professional. How did the the TT go on your return? So after you'd done your first. Uh, so um, uh, I think I don't know. I think uh, I, I was always like in around like twelfth. I think on the big bike. Um, I think I had two ninth place finishes in the in the six hundred. I was I was really happy with my six hundred results. Um, I believe that should have been on the podium in the in the Super Twin race, but I wasn't. I, I think I finished fifth in the end, and I, so I probably come home a bit down in the mouth about it, a bit annoyed. Mm. Um, I thought I should have done better, mm. I didn't. I didn't, you know. And uh, uh, but then Ryan was bringing on like Ryan was bringing like Michael Rutter into the team to do the Northwest and the TT, and um. I have so much time for him. I sort of felt at that time like once once them guys come in for the internationals, I was taking a back step. Like we went to the Northwest. Like I had my fir- I'm a first podium that year at the Northwest in a Super Twin race, and I was in the podium with Jeremy Williams and James Hillier, and I, I was finished third. And I just felt like when them get big guy when Jeremy came along, you know the focus was more on Jeremy. Like and understandably, like he's you know he's a lot better than me. And I was I was in my own lorry with my own team of men working at my own bikes. And you know, but I probably just needed a wee bit more care from Ryan. Like you know, and not not care. I just. I just Felt didn't. A bit more I, I didn't. I didn't like no, I didn't, no, no. It wasn't even that. I just didn't have the last wee bit. I just struggled with speed, and I didn't have the last wee bit of speed to, to keep up with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was a nearly man. I was a nearly man, and I was always I was close. But was, so whenever I went whenever I went to the national road race, I smoked everybody. Mm-hmm. Like nobody, I was unbeaten in the in the super twin class. I was unbeaten. Like I, I was running right at the front in six hundreds and big bikes. I was running right at the front. Me and Derek Seals actually had a, a coming together in two thousand and thirteen. So. Um, mid Antrim, mid Antrim, I was uh, um, Ra- Derek Shields was leading the grand final at the mid Antrim, and I was landing second behind him. And we came on to the last lap, and we came across. Uh, no, I I passed him in the last lap, so I'm leading the race. We came across back markers on a wee small back road, and I tried to weave in through the back markers, and Derek Shields hit me. Um, hit me from behind so we're both in the ditch. There's there's pictures of it. We're tumbling right up the ditch. So I'm up, and I'm like. What's going on? Like you've run in the back of me, and he's like, you pulled across the front of me. And I'm like, I'm moving out of the way of the back markers. Like that's what you do. I said, I can't tell what you're going to do behind me. I said, you need to like. I'm says, I'm moving for the back markers. You have to take that into consideration. Full ride, full ride at the mid Things was going mad. Uh, so we weren't we weren't in good terms. We went to Ulster Grand Prix and never really seen tell him. Um, we went to Killalane, last road race of the year. 
and grand final on the last lap of the grand final up through this fast right hander up into this big long left and I went to try and ride around the outside of Derek and Derek sort of hit a tank slapper and run wide and run into me I run out on the grass and one side of the road crashed out on the other side of the road hit a head bounced off it on the other side of the road I'm lying there in the road and I'm like oh that was so sore like, you're talking 140 mile an hour crash right now I'm like oh I'm so sore so sore I don't feel good like so I got back I got up I got up got back to the paddock and I had to finish another Super Sport 600 if I had a finished I think if I had a finished 10th or better I won the championship and I'm like I'm gonna have to race like I have to race medics over to you you alright oh yeah yeah I'm grand I, I'm 100% you, look where you crashed like you shouldn't be no 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 I'm grand I'm 100% and I lay in the race lorry I ran the race lorry feeling sorry for myself and Derek Seals come up to the lorry like um, shouting and going mad like and uh, my mum actually went out of the lorry and said to him look here look it is what it is and I ended up getting out and going out to, to go out to Derek myself but I wasn't fit like I was, I was done and then um, I, I got back on I got bike on a bike and rode in the 600 race and won the championship like, and I was actually riding John Burroughs I had John Burroughs leathers because I tore my whole leathers off me why was he shouting at you if, if you crashed well, I run in them well because oh, right. wait, so we went to Mid Antrim where he had run into me and I had shouted at him like you're running the back of me what's going on and now we went to the very next national road race and I run in the back of him you know so he's now shouting you're a madman you're mental like what would you do that for and I was like I didn't expect you to run wide <laughs> I was like I didn't think you'd t-. like he just took he got to the top of the hill and took his like he didn't do nothing wrong like it was me I was in the wrong but I was like I didn't expect you to run wide and I made sure you didn't even crash what's your problem you know so I had like wrecked the bike at the Antrim and the crash that it wasn't my fault it was his fault in my head it's his fault he he probably has a different opinion but in my head it's his fault in his head and then I was wrecked again so I'm wrecking bikes left right and centre bearing in mind Ryan won't let me cut no corners like so I'm fixing everything but I loved it like mm-hmm. and I had to be fair I was I was riding well and I had I had plenty of support from good sponsors, you know. And did you just, um, did you then go to John Burroughs the year after? No, no. So, end of 2013, obviously, I just felt like I needed to move to the next level. And I thought I was in a comfort zone with Ryan and uh, things. But I just didn't know. I didn't believe in my head that that, I think I needed a change. A change is as good as a rest or whatever the saying is. And I needed a change. And uh, I went to, to Millsport. Millsport Ducati and asked them could I ride a bike for them this was in February of 2014 and uh, went to them and they had offered me a deal to ride their Ducatis and I, I also went to Wilson Craig and Wilson Craig offered me a deal to ride his Honda so I was going and I'm like asking friends what would you do you know like if you had the option what would you do and I, I thought that riding for Wilson Craig was a safe bet. Like Guy Martin had rode for him, Cameron Donald, William Dunlop. Like I'm thought, I think I'm yeah, Wilson. Bike, like, yeah. I'm thinking I'm like, I, you know, this is a safe bet for me. Now, the carry might be good, but it's not like I'm, I can't go to the TT knowing that that Panic Alley is going to handle good. Mm-hmm. You know, where if I go on that Honda, like I know it's a proven package. But I so I signed for him for 2014, but. I had no backup like before. Like he had had brains over working at the bikes and like um Alan Alan I can't remember his second name. I came and worked at the bikes and all. But I was running Wilson Craig's team myself. So Wilson arrived and gave me the lorry and gave me the bikes and I had a six hundred that was just built and it wasn't even plugged in the computer. The thing wasn't dynoed like it was. You want to heard the thing? My friends always talk about it, the TT it coming through the start finish street and it was just like. Bah. Like it was terrible. Just bogged down. It was just a complete. Was, that, was, that, was that a free ride from Wilson, or did you actually bring money as well, like to get the infrastructure? I, I, remember, uh, no, I think it was a free ride with Wilson. Because when I spoke to Wilson, when he was the God love him, when he was still with us, yeah. and he, he said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah," and it was he wanted sixty grand off us for the Irish road season. <laughs> sixty grand. I'm thinking, mate, I can't even sh- like. I've what, got the shoelaces. What in team? Boots. What team? Well, maybe then there well might have been. Right, yeah. Well, Darren Gilpin now runs the team, and Darren's a very good friend of mine. But Darren actually was brought in the team through me as well because um, I, I I was riding for Wilson, and I can't remember. It, it could have been the crash actually with with uh, Derek Shields in 2014 at um, at the Mid Antrim, and I needed the bike fixed, and I was like. I'm lying there, like not able to move. I, I, um, I, I had another crash somewhere and broke my pelvis too. I broke, oh yeah. Uh, hi. Oh. I, I 
I broke, no, it was 2013, sorry, that I had the crashes with Derek Seals. It was 2014, I crashed at the, I crashed at the, um, Scaries. I, I crashed at Scaries and I broke my pelvis and I dislocated the shoulder and I cracked my sternum and I raced three weeks later. Tried to race three weeks later. So I, I spent a week in hospital. A week in, I broke the top off Amy Elliott Crest, so it's not weight bearing, but it was sore. Like, and uh, I obviously I cracked my sternum, so it was like I was in pain. But like three weeks later, I'm like, I can pass the medical. I can pass the medical. Here, went to Armoy, rode on the Friday, all day practice <clears> at Armoy on the Friday. Um, got up on the Saturday morning, I'm thinking, I don't feel good. Like, I don't feel good. Went to the, went to the racetrack and got on the bike to ride in the 600 race and my, my the side that my pelvis broke my left side my foot kept falling off the foot peg in the warm-up lap and i couldn't control it and i pulled in and i was like nah not for me pulled in and throughout that day i just got worse and worse and worse and worse um until um I, I, I had to get lifted and out of the car and into the house whenever i got home and then they rung an ambulance for me and i spent another four days in the hospital in, in shock because i'd tried the race you know and the only thing that was holding my whole me together was my muscles you know and i tried to ride with it and it's a disaster what a fella <laughs> And so that's brain, brain. I told you I was in the crayon class at school. I told you I'm not the smartest <laughs> creator in the world. Like <laughs> bloody work for you. So yeah. So when the burrows connect, yeah. Let's go back to the burrows. Um, like the the well, Farquhar stop straight oh, in the burrows. No, no. Well, I had the crash. I had the crash in 2013. End of 2013, I had the crash. Um, and my, my whole leathers was ripped open. Mm -hmm. And the ride in the 600 race, and I was needing a set of leathers, and I didn't have any spare sets with me. And John lent me a set of his leathers. So I won the 600 Irish Championship in 2013 with John Burroughs' leathers on. Right. And then, but then the year after you ended up riding for Wilson Craig. Yeah, I rode for Wilson Craig. And then Craig. after Wilson Craig, was it? Then, then I went to ride for John Burroughs. Right. Um, Full national and international. Yeah, we were in Mackay. We were in Mackay. And uh, for, for, for which so, team were you in I was riding for, for Wilson Craig. Now, now, I'm riding for Wilson Craig, but I'm sailing my own canoe. Like, so I've got my own team that I've built up through the years of people that came and helped me and like just grasping people. Nobody was paid. Nobody got nothing. But, People just loved it, and they loved it. I, I, I probably took my pride in the fact that everybody loved what they were doing. Like everybody loved being involved with me, mm -hmm. you know. So like I had a team around me that it was like my mom would have done a bit of cooking, and you know everybody would have went out on a Saturday night after the race and would have had a few drinks and a bit of crack, and everybody just loved being involved. And there was nothing, there was no money about it, like you know. So I was doing that whenever I was riding for Wilson, and then two thousand and. Aye, so then went the went the Mackay in two thousand and fourteen, and I said to John and Mackay, I said, John, any chance I get a conversation with you? And I went and sat with him in the bar, and uh, John probably didn't like me up to then. But I don't know what I did or not, but he, I probably wasn't. He probably he probably wasn't his biggest fan. Like I, I raced with John whenever John was just finished, and he probably just thought it was a cocky buddy that just didn't. And then I got talking to him, and I was like, "Can I ride your bike?" Like, and I says, "Dan Neen's riding it this year, and like he's been really good on it, and I want, I want to ride it for you next year." And we come home, and I got the deal done then to ride for John, and um, it was it was great, like you know, full Irish scene, and also. Northwest TT and was also that yeah 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 but um, but I brought money with me like or I was bringing money like and uh, but I didn't make it that far so um, I didn't make it that far we went to went to uh, done a couple of RS Championship national uh, short circuit races at Kirkus and Bishop's Court and then I raced at Cookstown it probably went I went good like I went to uh, Candlegee went well. Uh, I was nearly building all the time. I was getting better every time I stepped on the bike. Every time I started believing, I had this team. I couldn't believe like it was nearly like back to the gear and Kawasaki days where I was coming in and I had this team that was just doing everything. Like you I would have went up on, to you won on the super bike your first short circuit. I I won I won I won a short circuit on it on the on the bike, but. I, I I just don't think I think the the bike was more capable of what I was doing on it, you know, and like, but I was doing well. I was fast. Like it was probably bad. I had a better start of the year than I had in any other bike. Yeah. Um. I just I just thought I can do better. And you went went to the northwest that year. Went the I so I went to Don Cookstown Tandergy. Went to the northwest. I finished in the podium twice twice in the six fifty, and I had good results in the six hundred and the big bike. Then better than any results I'd had before. And this is all under the Burroughs banner. Yeah, yeah, because but like because right. we we got the, we interviewed him earlier, like whatever order these podcasts go out in. But we had John on and the infrastructure. What a fella he is. That's actually the first time I've had a proper chat with him. So, but like you say, the cracking bikes and what they're capable of is fantastic. 
fantastic. And that's a very modest way of saying it, the fact that you went out and just won your first race on it, you know, and you yeah. don't feel like you'll get the capability. But the bike, the bike was like a rate, the way you prepared it. Aye. Coming from the Ram Farquhar days and the fact that I had always had an input, I always liked to go up. Like I would have been up like one night during the week and just helped helped out, you know, and done whatever John told me to do just because I liked to be involved and I liked to know what was going on. And So I went and got my hands dirty. But I, whenever I went to a racetrack, I stepped off the motorbike and they they sorted yeah. it and I stepped back on it and told, I told Arnie, the suspension man, what I wanted to change and it was like being on a professional race team, which I hadn't had from 2009. You know, so like this was massive for me. Mm-hmm. And um, going to the TT that year, that was that the year you had your, yeah. your crash and uh, talks through like oh, the run up, up to the, was that in practice or was that in a race? Uh, in the race. So um, my memories about Patsy through the through the crash of a frontal lobe contusion. And, uh, Jesus. So, so my, my head, my, I have a head injury and my memory wouldn't be great, which is why probably the last two or three years has been more Patsy than what the earlier part of my career was. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we went th- well, so I was riding well, podium twice the Northwest and the Super Trend. Like I'm riding good. Um had good results in the six hundred, good results in the big bike, everything went well. We're on the senior seat senior TT day. First race was Super Trend race, and I'm thinking only Super Trend race of the oh, only Super Trend race of the year, and I'm thinking I'm a podium man in this race, like uh, took off the line and the pit lane limiter was stuck on. Oh. So I rode, I would near most, a brave bit of the way down, like a brave bit of the St. Ninian's Crossroads with the pit lane limiter on, fl- flicking it. Probably could have just flicked it and would have turned off, but it was probably in that much of a panic thinking that I could finish in the podium in this race. And I'm flicking it and flicking it and couldn't get it to turn off. And James Couton started 10 seconds behind me and caught me. By oh. the time I got to the bottom of Bray Hill, he was, he caught me like, and uh, so like I'm already down. And, um, J- James used to James would have passed me on the, on the big street bits and James would have passed me and I got a slipstream and followed and, and then anything that James was struggling with then I would have went ahead and I had to pull James along like and I had a good race but I finished fifth again and it wasn't good enough like I went there I went there to win the race if not be on the podium like I, like, I was determined and I wanted to be there and I just it didn't happen for me and I was that I was that annoyed then I, 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 I don't know I don't remember anything about today but um I obviously went out in the senior TT thinking, well, the super trend never worked. We'll see about it now, you know. Because I, I saw you in practice like earlier that week and you were just absolutely bouncing all over the place. You were loving your ride and over the moon. It was like the first night, you're like, oh, I've banged out a 25. Then the following night, it was like a 27. You know what I mean? And you were just, you, you were just high on life and it was just confidence, confidence, confidence. And it was just... But that's what John's input had and John's whole team. Like, I was so happy. Everybody talks about that year and how happy I was. And, like, I was training hard. I was, you know, um, everything in my life was just perfect. It was in, in, in sync and nothing could have went wrong in my eyes. For, um, was the, in from the crash, were you in hospital for, like, quite a long time? Yeah, so um, so I'd done, I done 100 and, 128 four from a stand and start in a senior race. Um Sorry. Uh, and then the second lap, I was the second lap I was on. It was it would have been a hundred and thirty lap, which would have been by far my fastest lap ever. And I, I, I crashed in the crunk of body. So, um, Jesus, I'm airlifted. I'm airlifted from the scene. A, a, a woman called Ali Bon and Paul Sinclair actually pulled me out of the hedge, but they're not allowed to do it the TT because of the, you might have broke your back, and if they pull you out, then you'll die. But this arm is wrapped around the back of my head, which blocks your windpipe. And she said. If that guy's not already dead, 175 mile an hour crash, he'd suffocate. So she she wouldn't listen to the marshals, pulled me out under the middle of the road. She resuscitated me, gave me three bags of blood at the side. I was dead. She resuscitated me, gave me three bags of blood at the side of the road. Helicopter came, airlifted me to Nobles Hospital, where my mum and John got to see me for a couple of minutes. And then they sent me then, they, sent, they airlifted me from, I spent about three hours in the entry. They airlift, or I spent about three hours in Nobles in Isle of Man. They airlifted me in the entry and I spent nine days in the entry in critical care. An entry. Um, my mum, my mum and John and a guy called Maddie that that helps for the team, uh, flew from the Isle of Man then straight to Birmingham. Stru- flew to Birmingham. They rented a car and they're driving up in the rental car. And my mum always says John Burroughs answered the phone and he was like, "Yeah, okay, right, 
okay, dead on, yes. And just like very vague on the phone. And mum was sitting in the back of the car and she said that she got the phone. She, she obviously thought then they'd said he died. Like he died because I told her whenever we left, whenever they left Noble's Hospital, I said, look, don't know whether I'll make it or not. Like, you know, <laughs> chances are I'll probably not make it. The woman, Ali Bond, that actually pulled me out of the head, said whenever whenever I took off in the helicopter, she said I wouldn't make it. Like, you know, so did mum... You, did you get to... Um... Did you get to go back and see? Like, do you know her yeah, now? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Good friends. That must like, be so surreal. Oh, like, to see, thank the, first... the person that like saved your life. But it was mad. I don't. I didn't know her. So the first time I met her, the first time I met her, like I, just, I flew, I flew her over. Um, I, so I had a party. My crash was in June, and I had a party in the in the December, and I called it Jimmy Still Alive Party. <laughs> and anybody that was involved with me, sponsors. <laughs> Like Ali Bond and Paul Sinclair, I flew them from the Isle of Man. A few had a couple of sponsors in England. I flew them over from England, put everybody up in the hotel, had a big party. And but the, she arrived <laughs> off the flight. She arrived off the flight. And the, my first words there was, "Bet you never thought you'd see me with my clothes on, because <laughs> I should cut all my clothes off." And I spoke to her on the phone, and she'd said about you know cut my clothes off. And I said, hey, "You were only looking at something. That's all you were cutting my clothes off for." <laughs> and I would give her a bit of The first words I said to her whenever I seen her was, "Bet you never thought you'd see me with clothes on." <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh my god. And uh, so I, and I have a great relationship with them. Like we were over, I went to Isle of Man uh, maybe two months ago and I, I met I met up with them. I went for dinner and uh, she's, a, she's my sort of person. She's the sort of person that I have great connection with. Like if, I, I would have her as a friend. No, all all the racing thing aside, the fact she's the same life doesn't matter. I would, she would be one of my friends. She's the same personality as me. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the the head injury, which was like massive sick. Does that upset you that you, you can you remember any of that situation? My whole life's patchy. So from I always Jesus, think your whole life. Once well, once we get, I always think once we get to like two thousand and twelve or thirteen, it goes patchy. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. Now I, I remember silly things like I remember where I was parked, Dylan Man, and I have this picture. I had a friend's road bike and over with me in a, um an ER six, and I remember I was remember riding it through the Isle of Man, but I have like a picture in my head of me riding it through the countryside in the Isle of Man. And I, I've asked people, and I, I made the journey. I made the journey. I, I went down to, uh, I went down to the Southern 100. I went down to the Southern 100 course, and then I ended up going riding a lap, and that that bit across, that bit across. That one. That's where my pictures and my heads from, and. I, 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 I just I don't know. I remember that. But see, I've got another story for you. Um, that that bike that I took of my sponsors, I took it on the lorry, went to uh, went from Belfast to Hasham, lifted the motorbike out of the van, went instead with a girl in Liverpool, um, rode the bike from Liverpool till Donington Park, watched the World Superbikes, rode back to Liverpool again, uh, seen instead with a girl for another night, on the end of the lorry again, and over to the Isle of Man, way to the TT race 2015. Day before the senior TT, day before my crash, the sponsor, the, the guy that owned the bike, rang me, Jamie, we've got an issue. And he says, what is it? He says, she's pregnant. No, he says, that, <laughs> he says, that, <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says, that bike, <laughs> he says, that bike, he says, I got a speeding ticket in for it yesterday. And I was like, oh, flip. where? He says, Liverpool. And he says, but that's not the worst. He says, I got another two today. And I was like, like so this is like the day before the senior TT the day before I thought I was going to win the Super Twin race and I'm thinking you've lost your license I think I've lost my license here like I had six points for talking on the phone I'm going to lose my license and I says to him look I'm not thinking about it I said I'm just going to go and race my bike tomorrow I said I'll think about it whenever I get home I said there's no point in me worrying about that now um, so went and had my crash so I'm lying I'm lying in the entry, critical care in the entry hospital and they're now saying what are we going to do now like, like so the um, the guy that put me te- put through my test was an ex policeman, and he he wrote a letter and said, uh, "This is Jamie Hamilton. He was putting the insurance proof that it was putting the insurance. Um, that it was him that we believe that was riding the bike. Told him about my journey that I'd done, blah blah. blah but he was in a crash, Isle of Man TT. They wrote a letter back saying, "Yes, we know of Jamie Hamilton in uh, Entry Hospital Critical Care. Um, hopefully he has a, a hopefully has a good recovery. Um, don't worry about the points. You've got enough to deal with at the minute. Let me offer the points." Yeah. Well, good on him. You know what I mean? Jesus, uh, what? You had to go. You, you had to go through a hell of a lot to get out of that. Mind, I just had to die. That's all I had to do. That's all I had to die. Talking about little, do you know, little wit, small wins, like yeah. about Harry. The small, yeah, red de- small red deals are doing that. It's Jesus, all about the small wins. <laughs> good lad, but, uh, yeah, but go, go, sorry, uh, but like going going back to that though. Do you, 
do you find that frustrating that you can't remember or would you prefer like, you just it doesn't bother you to be fair why yeah but, that's what I mean yeah, the, yeah. Uh, all it's going to do me getting myself worked about that will achieve absolutely nothing yeah. Yeah. like I need to focus like and I still struggle I've still a head injury I still struggle with memory I just have to try and deal ways around it like I yeah. write things down and I just try and work out ways to get around it there's no point me beating myself up but I can't change it do you know yeah. in terms of uh, everyday life now is there anything that um, f- like from your injury is there anything that sort of um it's changed. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't I can't straighten my arm, I can't feel my fingers. Um I've a less frank fracture in my foot, so you'll have seen a limp I, my legs are yeah. a bit short. I, I tell you what, that you know what was I really enjoyed there? Standing in Chris's kitchen. First time I've seen you without a cage on your leg. That yeah. was actually like you know what, thank foot for that you know what I mean? It was like uh, it was yeah. great to see, mate. You know uh, what I mean? I, but it was like a I just worked, uh, Chrissy. You don't know me, but you've worked out now. This boy is just like Tapped. a walk. Of, <laughs> no, it's just a walk of disaster. It's just like, he walks from one disaster to the next. Like, and that's just the way it's always been. Like, you know, there's no point getting yourself worked up. Right? That's what it is. Just try and make the best of it. I need to get an operation on my foot at some stage. Get my foot broken, straightened, and fused together. Um, they'll straight broken, straight and fused my ankle. I can't straighten my arm. I can't feel my fingers. I have a head injury, which so I struggle with uh, the conversation. So I'll come out of this here and I'll not have a clue what we talked about. But then I'll watch it back and then it'll stick in my head because I've watched it. So I'm good at things that I see, but I'm not good at things that I hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not good at conversation. Well, it gives you confidence this is going mint this entire interview. So, you know, <laughs> so like, like, you know what I mean? So, when you get back, you've got to have that going. You're not like, bored yet, no? No, no, it's, it's obviously mint. But let, let's talk about, like, your leg. You know, you, you know, you were quick, you were, say, not quickly, far from quickly, but it was like you were back in the paddock, you were back with the team, and, you know, it was, you were a great ambassador. For, I was saying that to John on the pod, I'm, I'm putting a spoiler in for you. But, you know, you're a great ambassador for the sport. You know, you're walking, you know, limping around with this huge cage, God love you in the wheelchair but nothing was dampening his spirits and that was important to see for other riders and the sport in general but like let's like talk about that leg that leg f- that took forever mate well yeah. what's what's going on there it's just the way the stupid stupid positive mentality the whole like i woke up and i wasn't like I, I didn't really ever think of the negatives i didn't think about how bad i was i thought of what i could have possibly achieved you know like i went for i went for a year i went for a year um with the key well i didn't even go a year and the plates on my arm broke so i had to go back in get the plates get two plates took out of my arm one big thick plate put in on my arm then i went for like another few months they took the cage off and i'm like yes that's me so a year i had like a year and nine days with the key with the first cage on took it off two days later the leg broke again um so I'm back in another cage on went for another year the doctor said to me, Jamie, it just doesn't look the good. It doesn't look like it's healing that well. Uh, changed. Uh, I got in touch with Ian Hutchison. Changed to his doctor in Cambridge, um, uh, Matija Kirkovich, best doctor in the whole world. And um, so he said, Jamie, the bone's obviously infected. So he took he took the, the second cage off, cut seven centimetres of bone out of it, um, and then fed it me a new cage, but then I had to regrow the bone. So I regrew like six centimetres, took an infection at the top of my leg and couldn't go no more. So I went then, so that was my third cage in my leg. Uh, went on another full year. Got it took, so I got it on in the, the July, uh, 12th of July, I think it was, and went to like the September of the following year. And took the cage off, broke again. Broke within a like I think it was within four or five days. Broke. I actually drove my girlfriend's horse lorry when my leg broke. My leg was broke. That that was the first time I took it off in two thousand and sixteen. Uh, took it, took the key, the first cage off. Um, leg broke again. But I drove her horse lorry, and she went. She wanted to go to an event and down south, and I was like, yeah, 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 and I'll drive you. W- got to her house that morning on crutches. Uh, crutches into the horse lorry. Drove the horse lorry down south with a broken leg. Said to her, no, I'm just not getting out. I just don't feel up to it. You know, a uh, broken leg. Like, got back home. Got back home, lying in bed. Left my leg up and you could just see it bending in the middle. And I'm thinking, Jesus. I'm thinking, flip sake. I'll show you a picture of it. And it's, it's rash like. And I'm thinking, flip, that's a disaster. So I went back in the story there. So uh, the third the third cage, you got the third cage off by Matija Kirkovich in Colchester. Um, within, it just broke again within a week. It broke. Cage back on. Uh, went to the February of the following year. Mr. Kirkovich said, Jamie, it's not healing. And I said, I said, 
positive mental attitude, the way I've just dealt with the whole crash, just cut it off. If you'd have cut it off in the crash, I'm going to be doing the Paralympics, cut it off. Like, and that was my mentality. I st and it was like a, f a, f a switch just flickered, and I was like, now I'm going to, like, if they cut my leg off, I'm going to achieve, achieve something. You know, I'm, I was originally straight away. I wasn't thinking about the negatives. I wasn't thinking about the fact I wouldn't have a leg. I was thinking about what I could have possibly achieved with one leg. You what, know, what an amazing attitude. That's what I mean. Stupid. <laughs> you know, it's stupid. Like, I should have. It's not stupid. I should have I, I been more depressed. You know, I probably should have been sadder. I should have. And it's just, but you can't. I, I'm glad I wasn't. And I, I'm Good know, lad. I'm going to keep this podcast for any time I'm feeling. I'm just going to play this segment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, right, honestly, you know, mate, I'm, honestly, like it's it is like unbelievable. Right, but it's just, uh, just you have a choice, and like, why, why would you feel like, why, do, why would you think about the negatives whenever you can't change them? That they are what they are. Like you've a bro like, I, at that time, I had a broken leg, a cage in my leg. I couldn't, you know, I'm, I'm straightening the leg. I was taking infections. I was doing one thing after another, and it just like. Why would I get myself beat up on that whenever I can look at what I can possibly achieve? Like, I, I climbed Slimish Mountain. I've never climbed a mountain in my life. Climbed it with a cage in my leg. You know, I, like, I adjusted my push bike. I took the pedal off my push bike, moved the pedal like 100 mil out, got a bit of bar turn, moved the pedal 100 mil out. I was cycling on my push bike. Like, I went, uh, whenever I went to Mr. Kirkovich in Cambridge, he allowed me to go swimming, which people in Belfast didn't do, but with the cage on. So I wasn't swimming. I was in swimming like 40 and 50 links in the swimming pool. It was just like, and whenever he said to me in Feb, he said to me in the February of 2019, he says, Jamie, it's not healing. And I actually believe then I give up, I give up, but I didn't give up on the fact where I lay in the house and was depressed. I just came off all my tablets. I just was like, the leg's not going to heal. There's why, what's the point? And I was like, so I'm doing everything. Like I'm, I'm getting stuck in. Like I was, I converted two vans into motorhomes. I took two Mercedes Sprinter vans I converted into motorhomes just as and when I felt good. Like there's some days I didn't feel good and I just lay in bed. And there's days if I felt good I went out and started trying to fit her. I'm like, I I can't work with my hand. It's just like, but I try my best like and I have a go. And it turned out good. Like, That's you know, class. it turned out good. So, um, I'm not, like I've had plenty of help from friends and so on and Is, so forth. Has there been anything that um you didn't do so uh, pre-accident, is there anything that like you didn't do in your life that you found after your accident that you've like really like um, any sort of hobbies or interests that you've like got over the last few years? I go try, I go try this biking, and I wish I had done it when I raced because back then I thought that's no no relevance to me. Like, but see now with the trials biking, the, the, one you have so much crack with your friends, but just throttle control. You know, the, the I, so small I, things. I, I took it up um, maybe a year and a half. So, like, you should have in, had your bike over with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what big hills you could have got. I'll bring, honestly, <laughs> next time I'm over, I'll bring it over. I, I absolute, I, I've said it off, off uh, loads of times to Dom. It's like the best thing I've done over the last few years is get a trials bike. It's yeah. like so good. And like you say, the social element, because you've because you've got them open face helmets, like all day you're having the crack and like you can, a it's such a laugh as well. Like, if, if you're ever over in, if, if you're ever over in England, and you can bring it over like uh, me we've got like a bit of a group that like me London Mike, Kev. Michael that's here with me is actually building a lorry and I keep winding him up it's not going to be ready for a few years but he, he reckons it'll be ready this year but we're, we would like to go to Inch Perfect oh yeah yeah uh, that's cool well, yeah. in I'll fact in fact we've got um, I think for, for all of our Christmas presents we've got uh, vouchers for that so we might even have some spare vouchers so if you come oh. over let's we'll get a day sorted and we'll go yeah, there because it's yeah. mint yeah. it is really good uh, it would be class but and like um, the way I get into it was actually Alistair Seeley that like I'm friendly with Alistair and um, Alistair said to me he says oh, get a trials bike sure we're quite wet and like bear in mind I literally hadn't the cage off very long and I'm thinking oh, that's mm. not a good idea yeah, not a good idea but I got the lend of a friend's bike and I went out and I'm rubbish at it I'm not very good at all but I love the crack like I love the fact somebody goes and does a hill they fall off halfway up the hill you make sure you make sure they're up so they're okay once you make sure they're not they're not badly hurt and you're yo what are you doing <laughs> no you can't you, no, you, can't, you. And we're, we're taking the piss out each other for crashing and it's just a complete piss day. it's like you get get there in the morning you meet up with each other who's buying the McDonald's today oh you'll not buy McDonald's you're, 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 you're miserable you'll never buy a mcdonald's for us boys and like it just a bit of abuse from start the, f 
the first time uh, we took Lundy, do you know, he <laughs> broke his ribs. Oh, you were telling us like, like, Yeah, no, it was just one of those, like, innocuous crashes where, like, nothing of a crash, but, like, the handlebar, like, went into oh. his ribs. Oh. And he lay there, like, winded. And were, it's one of them where you're, like, you think, you're, like, sort of laughing. And then afterwards, he mm. was, uh, that night, he was saying, actually, like, I can't sleep in that. And he had, but, yeah, honestly, it's such a laugh. Uh, but, yeah, that's class. Absolutely right. class. Have you got, uh, in fact, I'll check the Patreon page. We'll run a Patreon. Uh, a few people have sent in questions. So I'll, I'll check that out. Uh, uh, obviously, we've got the no. skills game, but we're going to give that a miss for I this one because your hand. I can't <laughs> find less hand, have I? And plus, it would be. Uh, it, people... I don't think six stones not very impressive on it. Is that what you did? Is no, that what I you don't did? know. I think I've done nine there, but. So it's not. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's uh, mid, no. mid okay, range. Wait, wait, <laughs> we're definitely put you on the leaderboard at nine, and we're just going to well, leave don't, it at that. I think, like, can we go here? Here we go. Look at the competitive nature. I, I love it. You've just got to put a good wait, man down. Oh, wait, just wait. I need to go and do a few stretches. Yeah. You, you can do as many as you want, mate. So you crack on, son. Oh, do I have to do it here? Yeah, go on. Jesus, shut, shut on the front door. Film it. No, no, don't tell him. Do it, go again. 12. Don't, shut up. Did I just say that? Tell him. Did I just did I say that? Did I? Did I right, do you know the go. worst about it? See the face I just made? I'll be screenshot it and cast yeah, up my face. That was literally <laughs> uh, Video on. Yeah, go on. You're at 12 again, I. Mate, honestly, that is. Unreal. It's not comfortable. <laughs> is that seriously with without we can see the most of it's on the left hand. I tell you what, honestly, that like that you can see the discoloration in his hand. That is <sighs> Jesus Wait, that's, youngin. That's the the highest we've uh, we've had on here is like Hickman and Jonathan Ray on thirteen point five. Mm-hmm. You're like one point that is literally I've seen unreal. Maybe we're practicing. <laughs> What's that? I've seen Hickey done that. 13.5, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not far off. You you can have a bash. Yeah, <laughs> so pa- pass this to the back. You're a big lad. I think you'll smash it. I'll get um, get the Patreon questions. I might do it last way, so as so I look up. <laughs> <laughs> straight arms. Out, straight out? Straight arms. Yeah. Go. Flip seat, my yuck. Try it. Eight. Flip seat. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'd be better not trying that, will you? Don't double for that. <laughs> right, like we'll get... Take crash last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll use that one. Uh, right, we've got three questions there, so um, we'll start with Keith Fletcher. Uh, I would like to know how Jamie's injuries are now and if there are any chance of a racing in the future. However, I just want to wish him all the best. He was a great talent and a good guy. In terms of riding, do you ride on the road? I, I had a I had C90s. A, I, 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 You're upon, a sucker for a C90. Upon, upon the 90, I, 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 I never ever rode a caddy before, and I I, I got one. I, um, a guy got one stolen out of a fire station in Belfast here, and I bought I bought the bike ended up a write off, and um, and whenever he got it back, and I got it and I fixed it up and rode it, and I thought I got back to the shed one night and I went, what are you doing? Just sell it, just sell it. I sold it because. That's not for me. It's not for me. I'd end up in trouble or dead. <laughs> oh, t- so I'd, I'd have tried that. I'd have tried dying again. <laughs> it wasn't that fun the first time. There's no point trying again. Yeah, uh, question from Adam Watt just asking about the new regulations of the twin class. Do you know how they've opened it up to 700cc? What's your opinion? I on? don't really know a big pile about it. I just I hope that it's quite even, which is it'll be quite difficult to monitor in the first year to try and even the whole thing out like there, Massively. I can promise you we'll go into the season and there's going to be some bike that completely stands out above all the rest 100%. and it'll be pot luck which fun it is <laughs> Don might know. Don. Hope, no, put it this way. I hope I'm on it. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what one are you on? Um, I'm on the Calton bike, so oh, I'm yeah. on uh, Fran and Niels in there. So the, the R6 though. Yeah, the Z, uh, yeah, Z650. Uh, so well, I'm on that. So it'll be it'll be good crack. So back it'll, in my day, it was the R6. <laughs> back, back when men were men. Back in my day, <laughs> you know, um, the grass was green. Do you, do you get? Do you still get to as many races as possible and like sort of keep your finger on the pulse with it all? And um, do you? Do you do any like sort of? Uh, are you involved with any teams or anything like that? Not really. I would go like if I'm going, I'll I'll be about John Burroughs' team, but he's a full team, and I don't want to go to every race. Um, I struggle. Like I'm I'm jealous. You like so I turn up the race and I see somebody doing well and I think I'd smoke you. Like you know, and I just uh, uh, jealousy. You know, I see them going out and I want to do it. And but I just I would never go back racing because I, I, never is a hateful thing to say. But I just I don't I'll not be back because I need to believe I can win. And I think there's too many things standing in my way for me to win races. And the length of time that it would take it could take two or three years before I'd be fast again. Like I'm away six years now and it could take two or three years. And that's two or three years of trying to find funding. I don't want to go to a sponsor and say here any chance you would. 
would sponsor me some money whenever I know that I don't think I can run at the front. Like I, I wouldn't waste somebody's money on them, mm-hmm. you know, and I can't afford to do it myself. Would, would you be in, do you know, like, for example, if there was somebody um, who w- wanted to run, run a team or has, has got a team, but kind of hasn't got, maybe has like a business or whatever and hasn't got the time to be involved in like the organizing and stuff. Would you be in, if there was like an opportunity in like one of the paddocks, would you be interested in having some sort of work like that? Like yeah. being involved with. Yeah, I would, I would love to be involved and uh, like, especially with young riders coming up through, I would, I would love to be involved, but it just hasn't really fell at that that I've ever seen that opportunity. Mm. And like uh, spot the spotters are all the yeah. rage and coaching and that sort of thing. Yeah. But if yeah. the, it, that that is something you're interested in, if somebody was in, I'm as as I said before, I'm just not very good at that. I can't bum myself up. I'm a far. I would far rather think of myself as an underdog mentality. So I can't bum myself up. So I would struggle with that side. And like I know, finally, a young rider nowadays has to be on social media bum themselves up, telling everybody how fast they are, and I can't do that side. So all I can do, like all I could I would be better at managing the team or I would be better at, you know, trying to help the rider be fast, but I couldn't I couldn't help them as far as getting sponsorship and, and doing that side because I wasn't good at it myself. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah. But uh, track, my my way of get but... my way of getting somebody to sponsor me was getting friendly with them, letting them see me and see that I was a, a good lad and, and have fun and have fun. And then, and then I said, oh, that boy's a good lad. We're, we're, we're going to help him. He goes well as well. Like he goes good too. So we'll, sp- we'll support him. They didn't, they didn't sponsor me because I went to them and I said, look, I am going to get you the most publicity you're ever going to get. I'm going to write your name over social media 24 seven. I just not like that. Like I'm, I always, their sunglasses, man, like their boys that sit the front of the grid with their nice sunglasses and that a nice hat. That wasn't me. And that's why I probably never fit in at BSB. Like I just didn't have the right sunglasses, right hat. Like, <laughs> I didn't fit. Like a, mm-hmm. I, I was, I'm more, I'm, I'm a road, ra- like I'm, I was nearly always a road racer. I'm more rough and ready. I'm more like I'll sit in the grid and I'll have a laugh with you and we'll have a bit of bump there. And um, I'm not. I'm, I'm terrible at the social media thing and all that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah. It's it is whether it's fortunate or unfortunately, it is a massive part of it yeah. these days, and it and um, especially for like the the commercial side and like sort of almost always on this podcast we'll always, no matter who we speak to it's always um finding the finances to to make it work especially early in people's careers it's it's such a um such an achilles heel for most people and unfortunate and it's yeah it's all part of that in this i don't think bad of them people they're, they're better at it than i am just i'm just but i i it is what it is and i just you know you only can paddle a canoe you paddle your own canoe like and just make the best of it that, absolutely like Glenn, like Glenn Irwin as I said before went complete me and him went complete opposite directions where he came to BSB whenever I was nearly on my way out and but he, he like he's so good like and I admire him like even now to this day like I look at his Facebook post and I think fair play to you like I don't fancy having the chase after sponsors and you know and look up to them as such but you, you're playing the game and you're playing it really well and um He's, he's nearly probably at the start it was a game for him and now he's just turned in like he, he lived so long in that moment where he now is that person that like he does like he, that's a natural thing to do for him and I look up then I think fair play to you like you're making it work for yourself like I couldn't have done what I couldn't do that like mm. it's not it's just not me it's just I'd far rather I'd far rather I tried to get you spoiled like that's why I kept saying what you said like we'll go out for dinner and what I really was really thinking I was like I can get you blitz <laughs> to be fair we're, we're just down the road from the anchor and we're always everyone mentions it on this podcast and I've never been so I tell you what let's wrap this up and let's, <laughs> let's, let's get our way down there I don't, I don't know I'm going to have mate, to mate. just look at the battery on my van and make sure yeah. I'll get there I'll, I'll, save I'll up enough charge I'll take don't worry he's full of red so it's, uh, we're, we're good to go so, like, don't worry about that mate. See, see, Jay. In, in English, you English people don't even know hardly know what red diesel is do you even have red diesel over there this is a trick, don't answer it. <laughs> no, this is a trick, no, do no, not answer I it. I always got the impression you didn't really do red diesel the way we've done it over here. You always know what it from the customs watch is this. <laughs> yeah, we're still going to get on the boat. Well, no, I'm, you know, I'm still... on electric. I don't do. Oh, no. I, I tell you, He's actually, just but, throwing no, us under the bus. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you better still. I'll tell you better still. I actually bought a Mercedes Vito uh, about six months ago, and it's ad blue, so I can't even run red now. Boy, I'm devastated. But I feel like a hero. See, whenever I go into a petrol station and I put clear diesel in, I stand there and I think I've made it. <laughs> I have. I've made it in life. I'm, but I'm using clear, like, and I'm nearly pointing to people. No, look, clear, clear, clear diesel. <laughs>
Harry will be devastated. Well, but before we get really down this rabbit hole, I think the, ang- the, a- the anger is calling us, gentlemen. But honestly, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and please, please, I-, I know at times you may not enjoy it, but please keep coming in the paddock. And you have no idea how many people are looking up to you as well, mate. Especially after this, people will be listening to this and just thinking, what an absolute lad. But I know you don't do social media, and I'm not saying you have to do any more than you're doing now or whatever you're doing. But please give people a chance to follow you what, what what's the best way of following you i uh, just go on jamie hamilton on facebook or whatever and um i add me up <laughs> but definitely look i want to say thank you very much for having me on it was a it was a massive surprise to get the text message to say here you fancy coming on because i watch all the time and i watch everybody else and I'm, I'm, i admire the show and i think it's it's about time somebody's done something like this so fair play to you so and especially making the trip to Northern Ireland to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Only here for the red, mate. But anyway, mate, we'll catch you next time. Also, I've, I've, like, uh, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Pro- properly enjoyed it. And I'm sure lots of people watching and listening will be. So, uh... <laughs> you, know, you know, before we go, he goes, what do you know about Jamie Allen? I said, don't worry, he'll let us know. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> off we go. I, I know we're good, Reb. Diesel, will pass up the road there. I'll just show you. <laughs> so, uh, ma- massive thank you to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, and to our patrons. And uh, I think this is going to be the, the final, because um, we're getting the boat back tomorrow morning. So, uh, uh, this this will conclude Work Monday. This will conclude the tour, but it's been a, a busy couple of days, and uh, yeah, and just a quick shout out. Do you want to uh, thank the place where we're staying? I was about to say Chris Kennedy and the Kennedy family of their uh, Devil Glory tattoos. I, I cannot thank you all enough. Absolutely, the thing is, right? Everyone says it when you're in the north, like Northern Ireland. Everyone's the same. You truly are. You, you just bring everyone in. It's an absolute giggle. And by the way, for people listening to this, thinking, oh, you should have got so and so and so and so, don't be shy to drop us a message, get in touch with a suggestion list because we, we definitely want to come back, especially after we get Chrissy pissed. He doesn't drink, <laughs> but we're going to accidentally just slip him a few and we're going to get a, an absolute you giggle out of him. That and not drink, like. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> exactly it. But don't worry, we're definitely wanting to come back. We'll definitely get something so it's just, you know, time, time's the element of it. But um, no, needless to say, thank you so much to the Kennedys. Thank you to you, sponsors, Chrissy. It's been emotional. Till next Thanks time. Thanks very much. See <laughs> Click, buy, deliver with remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.